previously on Balls. Hanging on the line too long because we're very happy to have uh, a CEO of the ICC, Dave Richardson, from Dubai. And uh, according to Johnny, Dave, it's, it's quite difficult. You have to go through about four people to, to get hold of you. But he's, he said he just phoned you directly. No, of course. Um, well, it's quarter to seven, you see, so we after office hours, so much easier to get hold of me then. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, does Johnny bug you after hours? Probably. <laughs> but you don't mind, Dave. We've been uh, known each other for a long time. <laughs> No, that's fine. No worries. Dave. Well, Dave, yeah, thanks. We we appreciate your time on, on Balls Visual Radio this afternoon. And uh, even though it's quarter to seven at night, I'm sure that you, you uh, got the cricket on watching South Africa play New Zealand. I haven't, actually. I've just got home, John. Um, so I'll be putting it on shortly. Um, but uh, So I'm just in the car park, actually. Just uh, I'll go, go upstairs and I'm sure... What, uh, what's the score at the I'll moment? tell you now. It's 153 for two, uh, New Zealand, in the... Yes. TV squad... 30th over. 32nd over. I, I could, TV's quite so they, far away. They're batting first. That's, yeah, that's right. Uh, Day-night game. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, I don't oh, know. They're actually doing quite well, considering their performance in the in the test series. They must have felt quite disheartened. But uh, I suppose the win the other night gave them a, a renewed uh, hope yeah, for well, the series. Well, I mean, I, t- I tell you, they started, they started this innings you know, pretty much the same way they started the the one down in Paul, and I thought, yo, we're going to see a mammoth collapse here. But they seem they seem to have rallied yeah. quite nicely. Yeah, no, I think they, they I think they seem to have more confidence in the one day game, uh, and we we know how they've caused uh, South Africa a few headaches in in past ICC events. Uh, certainly, they've beaten us unexpectedly on occasion. Yeah, you know, to, obviously South Africa missing a few big names today. We know about AB, uh, Hashim Amla and Del Steyn all out. So it's going to be interesting to see how, how the team gels without three key players. Yes, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think, I mean, that's probably one of our strengths is that we have got that depth. And uh, whereas New Zealand probably don't have uh, the same number of cricketers that South Africa have. So uh, I suppose there's no excuse for us. Yeah. Um, Dave, obviously, I mean, we we ch- chatting local cricket here, but uh, want to know more about but what's been going on over there in Dubai and, and what's keeping you busy as uh, as CEO of of, of the IC- ICC. It's a it's a it's a big uh, big position, and I'm sure you're very very busy. This is a this is a busy cricket time uh, over Christmas New Year. There's lots of cricket going on. Uh, we've had some really interesting Test series um, taking place uh, in Australia, South Africa, and and India. There's been some really good cricket played. Uh, obviously, our focus is on the match officials and the umpires and trying to make sure that they are well supported and do a reasonable job. And so far, they've they, they've been you know they've had quite a good season so far. Always uh, room for some improvement, but generally quite good. And then, from an event point of view, our focus is now on the ICC Women's World Cup, which actually starts at the end of this month uh, in India. Um, there's been a bit of a uh, an issue arising because uh, of the ill feeling in India towards Pakistan, and there's some sort of political movement there that don't fancy Pakistan, uh, anyone from Pakistan at all. Um, so uh, we've had to move some matches from Mumbai to an, uh, to another venue, which is. Uh, uh, safer and easier to secure. Yeah, and we, I mean, we just need to cast our mind back a, a, a few years, uh, see what happened to the Sri Lankan players, to, to know that, you know, mm. that type of uh, security precaution is absolutely necessary. Yes, um, certainly you can't take any shortcuts, and uh, although this is a different setup, um, you know, I, I think it's more political and a uh, threat of uh, demonstrations as opposed to a threat of any kind of physical violence. But still, you can't take any chances. Yeah. I, I just want to quickly get back to your comment on the umpires. And without uh, singling anyone out or mentioning any names, where do you find the, 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 the major problems to be with the umpiring? Well, I mean, it, it, the bottom line is umpiring is exceptionally difficult. So with the level of scrutiny that the international umpires are under where, you know, every replay is examined, uh, if they don't have the backup and support of, of the decision review system, well, you know, uh, they are on a hiding to nothing. So um, and uh, so there have been a few uh, matches in India where they didn't have the decision review system and mm. some decisions haven't been rectified and they've, and they've affected the results of games. So that's where the umpires come under pressure. Um, but that's not to say that you know they're any any worse than they were before. 
Um, and their performance is always around about that 94, 95% correct decision percentage. So um, nothing to be concerned about, but it's, uh, it's something that, uh, you know, like your team, you know, you want your team to be good in every match and do well in every match, and it's the same with our umpires. Yeah. Are you any, any closer to, to having India adopt the, the decision review system? At this stage, probably, uh, certainly there are no indications uh, that they will, but, um, you know, our focus is, is making sure that we continually try and uh, improve the, the technology that is used um, and that uh, I think it's a slow progress uh, process. I mean, Anil Kumble, who's now chairman of the ICC Cricket Committee, um, you know, he said, you know, just give them a bit of time and uh, he thinks uh, uh, there'll be more support for it going forward. Yeah, I, I mean, you'd think that you know it would have to be adopted eventually, if, considering that they host the probably the most lucrative tournament in the world, uh, the cricket tournament that is the the IPL. You know, you'd think it would be, um, you know, a, a, a matter of fact. Yeah, well, I mean, the the the, the good thing about uh, well, the fortunate thing for for twenty twenty cricket, of course, is that actually, relatively speaking, there's so few umpiring decisions that get made. You know, most of the batsmen are either caught in the boundary or uh, in bold or whatever. So the, actually, if, if we've had 2020 internationals where the umpires don't make a single decision. <laughs> so the, yeah. the need for DRS in 2020 cricket is not nearly as high as, as, as for example, for a test match. It's, it's such a cool thing, though. I mean, I, I look at, I look, I'm watching the Australian Open uh, at the moment, and you look at, at how it involves the crowd. You, you know, not only from yeah. a, from an accuracy perspective, but from a spectator's perspective, it adds that extra dimension to a game. It certainly does, and, and that's really the feedback we're getting with the decision review system. Obviously, in cricket, it's a little bit more complicated. There's so many more aspects to it. Tennis, it's much simpler. The ball's either in or out. The lines don't move, and it's much easier for Hawkeye to 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 show exactly where the ball has gone. In cricket, we need a there's a predictive element, and there's uh, so many different facets. So it is more complicated with cricket, but still, I agree with you. I think people have come to accept it now. They understand more or less how it works, and uh, they miss it when it's not there. Yeah, um, I, I'm interested to get your thoughts on. I, I mean, you you might be CEO of the ICC, but you're still a, you're still a South African, and I'm sure, no doubt, very proud of of what Gary Kirsten has has achieved with the, with the Proteas in his short time there. Well, I think so. I mean, uh, he either has been very clever in uh, taking on the teams at certain stages in their development, which make <laughs> him look good as a coach, or he, or he does have the magic touch. I'm a, I, I, we'll give him the benefit at this stage. But, um, no, I mean, South Africa certainly, you know, they look a really experienced and, and, and powerful team now, um, especially in the test arena um, where, they, where, they, where they're playing their best team all of the time. Um, and probably, uh, you know, the bowling attack is probably the key. You, you, you've got guys like Morkel who two years ago were a little bit inconsistent um, now they, they're far more accurate than they're a handful to anybody. And then, of course, if Stane is swinging the ball and Philander is moving the ball off the scene, then uh, they can have the beating of, of, of most teams. Yeah, and it's going to be an interesting series, actually, coming up with Pakistan. With Pakistan, yeah, that, as we've been chatting about on, on Ball's Visual Radio, that would, obviously, we, you know, we whitewashed the Kiwis uh, in the tests, but certainly mm. we can't expect to do the same to Pakistan. They will be stern opposition. Well, um, Pakistan's strength is their bowling. Um, yeah. They've got they've got some really good uh, uh, pace bowlers, but in particular, I mean, their spinner uh, is by far the Atmal, uh, not Atmal, uh, Saeed Ajmal. He's, he's clearly the best off spinner in the world. I mean, he's very difficult to read. His, his booze rather goes the other way. No one seems to be able to read it. And uh, he's going to prove a handful, even on South African wickets, I think. So it's going to be... Uh, their bowlers against our batsmen, um, South African batsmen on paper at least, have the edge. Dave, it's also fascinating to see how many South African-born batsmen pop up in, in the respective teams. There's one or two of them, uh, or three of them in the New Zealand outfit, also in the England outfit, and that old joke when the England cricketers come out here, where do they stay with their families? <laughs> 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 yes, no, it's, uh, well, it's, it's, it's good to see. I mean, it just shows that, you know, see... In our school cricket, I think we probably, if you look around the world, 
our school cricket is still probably tops. Uh, you'll battle to find, uh, you know, overseas you, they, they generally will play their, their junior cricket at clubs. And if they do play at schools, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's only the really posh private schools that play cricket. So I think, uh, you know, our school, our youngsters have a, a distinct advantage in being able to develop quite nicely at an early age. Um, and I think that, that helps us with our depth uh, in the senior ranks. Yeah. Dave, um, we'll let you get back to your family, and I know it's late there, but one last question uh, before, you, before you go. Um, it's a wicket-keeping question. Are you, you, your thoughts on, on AB keeping as opposed to a, a young Quinton de Kock? Well, uh, I mean, I obviously haven't seen much of, of Quinton de Kock. Um, uh, AB, as a keeper, is, is, is good enough at international level. He's certainly an excellent batsman. To me, it's all about the workload and whether he can handle it. Um, I know that the guys certainly are fitter than 10, 15 years ago I was playing, or even longer now, But so they probably can handle the workload, and I'm amazed that someone like Dhoni plays as much cricket, captains the team, keeps, and scores runs. So maybe they can handle it from a fitness point of view, but I just know from personal experience, it's a lot on your plate if you feel... Uh, you know, you, you, you give your full attention to keeping and then still be expected to go out and score 70, 80 in a one-day game. It's tough on the body, and uh, uh, I'd like to think that A.B. de Villiers can last for a good 15, 20 years at the top level, and I'm not so sure he could do it if he, if he continues to do all three. To keep, yeah. Um, just to let you know, we, we had uh, Ray Jennings on the show on, on Friday, and of course you, you took over from him as, as keeper in, in 1986 for this unofficial test. So just thought uh, we'd let you know that, that Ray is, uh, is alive and well and, and full of venom. No, he is. I mean, uh, he's, he's, he's quite a character. I know that when he, when he, when he coaches teams, uh, everyone knows he's the coach and he's, he's, he's had good success. So uh, he's got a passion for the game, which, uh, which, uh, which I admire. Yeah, uh, Dave. Listen, we'll let you go. We we uh, appreciate your time and, and apologies once again for Johnny organising an interview so late over there. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, John. Oh, yeah, thank, thank you, Dave. This is Balls Visual Radio. Darren, Simon, Kate, and John. Weekdays from three pm to six pm Central African time. Balls.co.za.